welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Tuesday broadcast here at Bible Tract Echoes. We call our Tuesday broadcast with this title, Our Tract and Truth Tuesdays. Our Tract and Truth Tuesdays. We, on our Tuesday broadcast, set aside our verse-by-verse study of whatever book we are going through, and if you tune in the rest of the week, we have begun a study in the book of Second Peter. We're in chapter 1 still, but it's Tuesday, and we use our Tuesday broadcast to focus on gospel tracts in a little more deliberate way, and also on helping God's people be better at communicating the gospel verbally and giving out gospel tracts in order that people can receive the gospel, the Spirit of God can bring a brokenness and a repentant heart, and they can receive Christ as Savior. And to that end, I have a couple of stories for you today. One of the great blessings of my ability to travel and speak in different local churches week by week is that I get to meet some really great believers. I get to hear their personal testimonies and hear how they're serving Christ. Well, here recently, though, I had a couple of stories I did not not expect to hear. One in person and one over the telephone. One from a guy named Steve, and I have his permission to use his name. The other from a guy I'm going to call Carl, and both of them have an unusual testimony, but one that has caused me to stop and wonder how many other Steves and Carls may be sitting in the midst of our local churches, perhaps even listening to the broadcast. So if you can, Stay tuned today. My Bible is open to the book of Jude, that little one chapter book right before the book of the Revelation. I'm going to begin to read at verse 20 here in just a moment. If you want to turn there, that would be great. I have a gospel tract in my hand. Now, friend, do you know what a gospel tract is? Well, a gospel tract, and that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T, a gospel tract is a tool to help get the gospel of Jesus Christ found in the Word of God, get that gospel, that good news, into the hand of people who do not know Christ as Savior. The ministry of this broadcast, this radio program, this radio program is just a radio arm, a small part of a larger ministry, as my announcer said, called Bible Tracks Incorporated. This is our 80th year where we are publishing gospel tracts in different languages, and we've been giving them away all over the world. We're able to do that because individuals, local churches, and some businesses have come alongside and said, we want to participate in seeing people around the world get the gospel, and they come and underwrite what we do. We become one of their missionaries. Well, one of the gospel tracts that's in a sample packet I want to give you is this one in my hand right now entitled, What? God wants everyone to know. What God wants everyone to know. If I were a pastor of a local church and I were to have a visitor packet to give to those who came to our church for the first time, this is a track I would put into that visitor packet. What God wants everyone to know. It asks these kind of questions. Who is God? Where did we come from? Where did Adam and Eve live? Who is the devil? What is sin? Why do people die? What happens when people die? And who is Jesus? Now, those questions are asked. It's put, they are asked in a very beautiful track format, but they're answered clearly using God's word. This is a very simple, clear track. It begins with John 3:16. for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes than him should not perish but have everlasting life. Friend, if you're looking for a clear, very beautiful presentation of the gospel for somebody who has virtually perhaps no background in the Bible and going to church and whatever, this 
track. What God wants everyone to know would be a great track to give them. This is in our sample packet. If you'll contact us and give us your name and address, we'll send you a sample packet containing one each of all of our English tracks. This one will be in there. You can get that information at the end of the program when my announcer comes back on, or just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. I mentioned having the book of Jude open here. Jude, verse 20, there's only one chapter. Verse 20 begins this way. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Stop, please, right there. Now, I want to tell you a couple stories today. First of all, let me tell you about Steve. And I, as I said, I have his permission to use his name. Uh, Steve has been a part of a straight arrow Baptist church all of his life. He grew up in the church. He's still there. As a nine-year-old boy, he went forward at a youth camp. Why? Well, the message that night talked about hell, and he was afraid of hell. So he went forward and prayed a prayer. Then again, as a teenager, he again went forward because, again, he was scared of going to hell. And for the next four decades, he said that he was born again, but by his own admission, he was not. Oh, he was a good guy morally, and he was serving in his local church. He taught Sunday school. The problem is this. All he had ever done was make a decision to escape hell. He didn't want to go there, but he had never received the person of Jesus Christ. There is a major difference there. The verses I just read here out of Jude speak about using fear as a means of helping people see their need to be saved. It is a legitimate means, but getting sinners to run away from hell is not enough. We must present the person of Jesus Christ, and the sinner must run to Christ and receive him. Being fearful of hell is not salvation. You and I who tell the gospel must be very clear that when we bring salvation message to a lost person that we present Jesus, they need a loving Savior who painfully agonized on Calvary's cross to purchase the sinner's escape from hell. They need not just merely, they cannot merely run from hell. They must run to and receive the person, the Savior. Savior, Jesus the Christ, the Son of God. That's Steve's story. I was in the middle of Sunday school class asking how long people have been saved. This man who was 62, I think it was, Steve is, raised his hand. He said he'd been saved about a year. It, it sparked an interest in me, and I asked Steve later on. 60 years of age, 62 years of age, part of a local church all his life, and just been saved a year. Let me tell you about another man. He's 57 years of age. He was generally born again in his 20s. He was married. He had a family. He was an electrician. I'm going to call him Carl. But due to some of life's hard situations, Carl got hooked on pain medications, which led him to start using methamphetamines. Now, all this led to the destruction of every part of his life, destroyed his marriage, his job, everything. Eventually, Carl was arrested, convicted, and he served five years in a state prison. Now, while he was in that prison, he obviously couldn't get any meth, so he was physically set free from that drug. But while in prison, God humbled his soul, humbled his heart. God broke him. And Carl began to seriously grow in Christ for the very first time in his life. He listened to some of our radio programs. Actually, he listened every day to our programs and programs like ours. He was became part of a, a multiple Bible studies during the his week each week there at the prison. He eventually became a teacher in one of the Bible studies. The book of James says that God resists the proud, but God gives grace to the humble. Well, time does not allow me to tell you all the ways in which God's grace became evident in Carl's life. Well, let me tell you one part of that, at least. 
Carl's ex-wife saw such a transformation in him that she dipped into her own 401k while he was still in prison to save his house from being sold out from underneath him because of his inability to pay taxes and so on. That's part of the grace story that God showed to Carl. But the power of the transforming work in Carl's life has brought him back to a, a being in a trusted place with his family. He's an electrician again. He is living, though, a daily, genuinely broken life before those that knew have known him all his life. He lives in a very small town. People knew he was in prison. People knew while he was there. He's been home about a week, and he is now living out a broken life in front of people, but they're seeing a transformed, broken life. He lives, Carl lives by the faith of the Son of God, who loves him and gave himself for Carl. All right, I've told you these two stories, but the question is, so what? Why am I telling you these stories today? Because I know that probably the majority of people listening to the broadcast are church-going folk. Well, I'm telling you these two stories today for these two reasons. Number one, you, friend, may be part of a Bible-preaching church, and everybody believes you are born again. But you have done all that uh, everybody expects you to do, but perhaps you too are afraid of hell, and you don't want to go there, so you go to church, and you have the Christian life pattern, lifestyle going on, but you, like Steve, have never run not just away from hell, but you've never run to Jesus to be your Savior. Fearing hell is not salvation. Fearing hell is a good thing, but it's not salvation. Salvation is not being afraid of hell. Salvation is not having a relationship with Jesus Christ. You need that. You need to be saved because you your sin is broken your relationship with the eternal God who made you. You cannot be saved without the person of Jesus being your Savior. You need the person of Jesus Christ, not information about the person. You need the person. But number two, you may be a genuine believer and you have never grown in Christ. Perhaps your life situations are allowing you to feel like it's okay for you to play around with sin and sin habits. My friend, sin will lie to you about three things. Number one, it'll lie to you about the promise that it will satisfy you. It will lie to you about the privacy that it will never be known. Sin will be known. Be sure your sins will find you out. And sin will lie to you about its price tag. It will cost you dearly. Beloved, if you know Christ and you're messing around with sin, run from sin. Run to your powerful Savior. You need a godly pastor who will use the Word of God to show you how to live the power of the resurrected life of Christ in your life to walk pleasing, godly, sanctified in His sight. My beloved, let's make sure we're saved and we're living a life that pleases Christ. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.